Hey everyone, so as you can probably notice, I'm not in the shop right now. I'll show you where I am. I'm actually in Vegas right now. Um, the reason I'm filming the intro for this video here is because our other intro, the file got corrupt. So I'm refilming it here. Uh, the reason I'm in Vegas is partially work, partially vacation. We actually secured a really big job down here for a wine tasting club. It's gonna be a 20 foot river table. So you guys will be seeing that video soon. But this week, we wanna show you what it's like in our resin wall art workshop because we teach students all the time in our business. You know, we'll have them come in and this particular class is how we build our resin wall art. So this is day two of the class that you guys are gonna see. So the students up to this point, what they've done is mix the epoxy, prepared the wood and done the pour. So today they're going to demold, cut, sand, and finish their pieces, and they're gonna look really good. I can't wait for you guys to see them. So once, once you've got your ends off, then what we've got, you guys will have to come over here and grab a wedge. Just one wedge will do. And you may wanna use, everyone's got an X-Acto knife too, you may wanna use an X-Acto knife for this, just to make it easier. So. What we're going to try and do basically here is get the wedge in underneath to pry up our, our wall art piece. So if you get the blade on your X-Acto knife, you can actually remove that bead of silicone that's in there beforehand and it's going to make it a lot easier for your blade or your wedge to get in there. So just make a few cuts with the X-Acto knife and then I take my wedge and I'll just pound that right in the end. Now the next part, this part is honestly a little tedious um, and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but we want to try and do our best with this part. We want to remove as much of the excess silicone as possible with this blade. there's a good amount of silicone that's kind of also encased in epoxy. That we're gonna have to ma machine through. You can try and pick some of this off, but we are gonna have to machine through some of this. It's just good to get the, the thick, big chunks over the top. So you'll just wanna take these earmuffs with you down there. We're gonna start up the planer and the saw. So it'll be decently loud. Um, grab those earmuffs, grab your piece, and that's, that's basically all we need. Okay. We're just gonna measure our thickness, see what we're at. I measured that 40 with these calipers. Um, if this were a normal piece of wood and I got this measurement of 40, I'd probably just go ahead and set my planer to around 40, 39 or something. Uh, but this, you know, there's high spots, there's some spots where the epoxy lifts up. My bottom's not 100% flat because of some of the silicone I have on there. So I'm actually probably gonna set it almost to like 41, 42, just a little bit above, so I know it's not gonna be too aggressive of a pass right off the bat. We should maybe clean this side up all the way and then we'll flip. So we'll do one more or two more, however many passes it takes to get this side completely clean, we're gonna do, and then we'll flip them. So I'm gonna change this two mils. One thing we gotta make sure when we go to make this cut, like I have on mine, see I've got that little bit of a nub there, that'll throw off our angle when we go to cut on here. So if you do have anything like that, just use this knife, peel that off.
We've got 120, 150, 180, 220, and 320 grit. So for a total of five sequences, um, I always like to start around 120. And some the, the reason we're going to start around 120 today is because we have a pretty smooth surface already since we used the helical head on the planer. So it gave us a nice smooth cut on here. Uh, if I was using something with straight knives or if even let's say I was using a router sled to flatten it, you might get some bigger chip out. You might want to go down to like an 80 grit or 100 grit to start, but 120 grit is going to do just fine for what we have to do here. Now to sand the surface, you know, you can get away with just kind of going all over the place, but proper sanding techniques in order to get the most even uh, and most consistent surface is actually to do with the grain laps. So you're going to want to go like with the grain, do passes horizontally across it, but you want to only do about a 50% lap. So if I go like this, I want to go halfway and then I want to do another one. I want to go halfway and then I'll start my next lap and I'm just going to slowly work my way over. Don't worry about getting everything out on the first pass. You can go ahead and do a second pass afterward. So we'll just stand up like this. So that would be like one pass and you can see I've still got planer marks in there. So obviously I've still got a little bit to go yet. Uh, but you work that. Uh, go with the 120 until all of these planer marks are gone. It should just look like an even kind of foggy surface on there. Do that to one side. You can hit the other side. And then you also want to hit your, end, your ends and edges. Now the hardest spot to get the saw marks out of is going to be the end grain end grain is harder than face grain so it's just going to take more sanding to get this out but you do have to be careful as you sand the end grain because before on this you know we had the whole surface covered so it's it's pretty hard to go like this and sand a dip in it but that's another tip I'll add don't lift your sander up to try and get a mark out you're going to put a dish in it no matter how tempting it may be always keep it flat on the surface and that same rule applies here. It's just harder because you've only got about an inch and a half wide section, but you want to try not to go like this or like this because then you're going to round your end there and we just want to keep nice crisp corners. So I, the best way I found to do that is actually by putting more pressure inwards this way. The less pressure you have, the more it's going to want to flop around. Whereas the more you actually push in, the easier you're going to find it to keep that to stay straight up and down. And it should just be, you know, a few passes, something kind of like that. This wood's pretty soft, so I actually just, that's all the sanding I need for that end on that grid. So once you've done your base, your ends, and your edges, then you would move up to your next grid. And you essentially want to do that same sequence for all five grids finishing at 320. And the type of finish that this is, they categorize it as what's called a hard wax oil. And then how we're going to apply it is something called a scotch Bright. The trick with these, you know, I could take this pad and I could just dunk it in and start working away. But sort of the trick with these things is to cut them into smaller sections. So then you, it actually lets you use less product because less of it's going to get soaked into this and just get wasted. So the smaller the pad you can use, probably the better. I like to cut them into ones about that big. So go like that. There we go. Got lots of pads there. that you do remove all of the excess material off of it. Um, reason being, we're going to let these sit obviously with one side down on the rag. So if you still had excess material, it might leave a rough spot. But if you make sure you've buffed it all off, you won't have any rough marks or anything once you leave it. Well, that's a wrap for the class, everyone. We, we got all these pieces finished up. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick look at them. You know, we've got this, this purple one here. Now, all of these are done with box elder. So this one is kind of like a nice purple lavender piece. It turned out really good. This is the one that Sauger sanded up. Uh, it's kind of like a teal, a little bit of metallic in yeah, there, right? Yeah. They put just a little bit. 
And then he rounded, he did the nice rounded corners on this, just so it's nice and soft in your hands. You know, if someone was using it as a serving tray, anything like that, that would be really good. Um, this one here, I actually, honestly, I was a little unsure about the stains at first, but the stain on this looks so awesome. He'd mix the um, the mahogany from Osmo and then also the, I think the ebony? Ebony. The ebony from Osmo, and he got this really nice color out of it. It's almost kind of like cherry or sapili, something like that. This one here, this one's really neat. Uh, she actually did two pours. She did side. blue and green. So this side's mostly blue. Well, you flip it over and look at that. You've got this really nice half and half kind of green pattern that goes on there. It changed so much during the curing cycle, but it looked really good when she it turned She started out. with only like this much green. Yeah. Like that much. Yeah. It all went off. And then it was like all blue. Yeah. And then it turned back to green. So it was kind of weird, but it turned out really good. And then this is the one that Sagra and I picked the color on. So this was like, there's like five different things. Five different here. colors. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of like this nice bluey purple yeah people people on Instagram like this one we mm -hmm. did the pour and then we got to give a shout out to liquid customs one of our students is from there they brought these uh, canteens is that what he called yeah, them canteens. canteens by for us so we're always needing water in the shop so we'll we'll be using these but it was it was a really great group of students we had a really fun time teaching this class you know we get to do this all the time so it's always really exciting to be able to expose students to this when they've never had the experience to uh, but thank you everyone for watching this week. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next week.